So now we have our mission control. So what are we actually controlling? Okay, so once the rocket's up there in space, uh, you're going to be talking to it. There's telecommunications yeah. all the time. All right. And what they need to do with this will depend a lot on what the spacecraft is doing. Okay. So let's say it's a direct broadcast TV satellite in geostationary orbit. You can just bolt down a dish to point to it. You don't want to check up on it every now and then, make sure it's broadcasting at the right frequency. That's right. So all the components on it are working. You may need to nudge it slightly to keep it in the right orbit. But I guess for the most part, it's doing one job in one direction, and there's not a lot to do? Yes, you have a mission control that might look after it, but they might look after lots of exactly. things at the same right. time, and uh, just check it's all working. If something goes wrong, it's more of an issue. You yes. might have to flip over to the roof. And it, it, once every now and then, you're going to need to nudge it to keep it back in position, because the moon's gravity and the yes. Earth's bulge totally pulls it out of position. But not much to be done. But if you've got like 4,000 satellites in low Earth orbit, there's going to be rather more to be and done. And I guess in all different orbits as well. And trying to make sure all the communications are working and check that all the spacecraft number 3,964 is actually a bit too low and needs to be nudged up a bit. And for this sort of thing, you're going to have to start automating yeah. it. If you have pay enough people to look after all these things, your budget's going to go right there and then. Exactly. Um, and spy satellites, again, or Earth observation, you're going to need to get the customers to come up with a list of all the targets they want to look at, right. and then schedule them, and then wait till it goes over a communication center, upload the commands, make sure they're not going to tie it in knots, make sure solar panels are still going to get solar power. Um, and we're very familiar with this, yes. things like the James Webb Space Telescope. Again, people will propose, I want to observe this long list of targets, they have to decide which order they're all going to be observed at, which instruments, but make sure exactly. that it screws from one to the next, it doesn't waste too much time, it's keeping its solar panels pointing towards the sun. And then you also, that, that's just getting the data up there. All that data has to come back as well. Yeah, and then the data comes back. And once the data comes back, we then need to analyze it. That's right. But you also, and then you have to check it for quality. You have to make sure it actually did what it said. And if it didn't, you sometimes have to redo it. So there's a long list of things that come into it. If it's earth sensing, like we talked about before, yep. I mean, okay, you can give people 10,000 pictures of pots of the earth, but then they've got to do something with it. Exactly. And so of astronomy data, again, there's lots of people developing software to analyze it and process it. So there's a lot that goes on here. Um, in in dealing with all this ground control, so it's really it's really the the function of the satellite that's really going to guide how big of a mission control it is. The more complexity in that mission, the more complexity your mission control. And again, you want to automate it as much as yes. possible. Um, and the final thing we need to talk about is communication to and from space. And to do this, you went and interview people at the NASA Tibimbilla tracking station. Be so we'll see that in the next few videos.